This is a TAB Media special report. I'm Jennifer Rash, and joining me is Dr. Beck A. Taylor, President-Elect of Sanford University in Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome, Dr. Taylor. Thank you, Jennifer. Good to be with you. All right. I appreciate you taking some time to chat this morning. Uh, you may have forgotten, but you are almost at the 24-hour mark of being officially and unanimously elected by the Board of Trustees. Yes, a moment I will always remember and cherish. <laughs> All right. Well, to get to March 10, 2021, though, was not necessarily a 24-hour process. It took many <laughs> months, and you have spent uh, multiple conversations and in various discussions with uh, the Presidential Search Committee um, for more than six months, really. Um, and in full disclosure, I was one of the 23 members on that search committee. So I technically have an advantage with this interview. However, to keep everything uh, genuine and all things fair, I did not discuss any of the topics or questions um, with Dr. Taylor. Would you say that's accurate? That is absolutely accurate. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, thanks again. I am excited to get to talk this morning. Um, but jumping back to that process, I would like for you to share with us the spiritual side of what the past six, seven, eight months have been like for you, your family, and how you've seen God move in various ways. You bet, Jennifer. It's good to be with you. Thank you. Well, you've described the last 24 hours correctly. It has been a whirlwind of excitement and energy and quick pace. And uh, But the last uh, six, seven months have been a more deliberate, uh, prayerful, uh, discerning process, not only for me and my family, but also for the Presidential Search Committee, uh, as you well know. Uh, for Julie and me, and, and I'm, I will say, I will often use the, the term we, because Julie is my partner in this work, and she will serve as First Lady, of course, here at Samford. Um, we, uh, of course, have always known and loved Samford from our time, uh, you know, years ago here. And we always anticipated at some point uh, during our service at Whitworth University that Dr. Andy Westmoreland, our dear friend and colleague, would one day step down from that position and that we might have the opportunity to discern God's call uh, back here to Birmingham and to Sanford. Uh, when Dr. Westmoreland announced his retirement in the fall, Julie and I immediately uh, began to contemplate, to discern, to pray about God's leading, really about whether or not we would submit ourselves to the search process. You should know, Jennifer, that um, I love my university back in Spokane. Things are going very, very well for us. And so we weren't discerning a sense of needing to leave someplace or run from someplace or, or anything like that. It was really a calling to, uh, back to Samford. And so after about a month of prayer, Julie and I decided to submit our names for consideration. And then the, as you said, the kind of long process of having multiple conversations with the Presidential Search Committee, uh, with uh, uh, members of our family, uh, just really praying over and discerning whether or not this might be God's call again on our lives. Uh, we began to feel the tug uh, on our hearts uh, back to Samford and back to Birmingham. And then we began to rely on the Presidential Search Committee and their discernment, uh, which was a very prayerful process, as you, as you know. And um, vocation and calling often happens when you have the intersection of discernment, prayerful discernment, uh, in our case, from the candidate, myself and Julie, and the committee who was assigned the task of identifying and selecting the next president. And, and that's really what we, what we found. God was so faithful in that process for us. Uh, God cared for our hearts in the process as well, uh, protected us from disappointment and other kinds of anxieties. And all along, we just, we just felt like we were in the palm of, of the Lord's hand in this. And of course, uh, we couldn't be more excited about uh, the result. And, uh, but had the result gone differently, had we not been uh, the, the, the couple that the Presidential Search Committee uh, recommended to Sanford, we would have felt content and satisfied that we were a part of a godly process that did ultimately uh, reveal who should lead Sanford University into the next chapter of its history. 
you know, one of the co-chairs of our committee, uh, Tim Vines, continuously emphasized that the prayerfulness of how we would um, go about mm -hmm. all the work and that God would reveal to us who the next candidate was. So it was. A Can I say just one thing about that, Jennifer? I've never been a part of a process before and I've, you know, I'm 51 years old. I've had the pleasure of serving multiple institutions in my life and uh, have been hired a few times in my life. Uh, I've never had a search process where the candidate and the committee prayed together. Uh, you know, it's one thing for the candidate to be praying. It's another for the committee to be praying. It's, it's quite a different thing for the committee and the candidate to regularly pray together. And that just really touched my heart. I thought that was a, a distinctive part of this process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Same, I, that was the same for me. I, I enjoyed that opportunity. Um, you know, one of the pieces that we that we prayed through a lot um, when it came to your story was the um, the faith background. Now you are a pretty much a lifelong Baptist. You grew up, um, if I'm remembering correctly, Second Baptist Church in Houston, Texas, and that's where you um, can tell us more about your your salvation experience and all there. But um, you've had Baptists all through your life, and will be Baptist again. But you've had this. 11 year uh, journey, um, more at Whitworth University, Spokane, Washington, and that is with the Presbyterian Church. So could you walk us through your faith journey, your personal testimony, if you will, from way back at 13 and then bring us up to date? Yeah, you bet. I, I did grow up uh, in the Baptist Church. Both of my parents were Baptists, actually attended Washtenaw Baptist University in Arkansas, where Dr. Westmoreland previously served as president before uh, moving to to Sanford, and so grew up in the Baptist Church. Uh, fond memories of growing up uh, in the Baptist Church. Uh, ended up landing in Houston for a very formative time of my life. Uh, junior high school, as you know, can be that for for many people. And uh, attended uh, uh, Second Baptist Church there in Houston, a very large congregation, as you know. And I actually also went to school at Second Baptist School. And um, because of just the faithful witness of that congregation, and uh, of course the faithfulness of the Holy Spirit uh, during uh, a, a beach retreat uh, to South Padre Island, um, uh, came to be a Christian. I felt the call uh, on my life uh, from Jesus and uh, became, became a Christian then and was baptized there at Second Baptist Church. And then attended for the most part Baptist churches for uh, most of my adult life as well. Uh, when we were here in Birmingham during a previous season, we attended Dawson Memorial uh, Baptist Church under Gary Fenton's leadership and uh, taught uh, Sunday school, an adult Sunday school class all five years that we were here. Uh, when we were at Baylor University, another fine Baptist institution uh, in Waco, attended a Baptist church there, taught Sunday school uh, as well there. Um, so I consider myself a lifelong Baptist. Uh, but we felt the call of, of God on our lives to, to move across the country to Spokane, Washington, to serve another very faithful Christ-centered institution affiliated historically with the Presbyterian Church. And uh, we have so enjoyed being a part of that community, even though uh, theologically and denominationally, uh, it was not what our previous experience had been. Um, it really allowed us to uh, get to know the breadth of the body of Christ from a different uh, tradition, and we have appreciated that experience. Uh, denominationally, the Presbyterian Church uh, is undergoing a lot of changes, and so I had to uh, help Whitworth University change as that denomination and other Presbyterian expressions were changing, and I thought that was an important experience for me uh, to be able to guide a, a faithful evangelical university in Spokane uh, through various different iterations of connections with the Presbyterian Church. All that said, Jennifer, we're excited to return to Baptist higher education. Um, we will be rejoining Dawson Memorial Baptist Church at the earliest convenience, and uh, we're excited to be a part of that community again, and to, uh, again, to give our lives uh, to, to Baptist higher education is something we're excited about. Tell us uh, your thoughts on Sanford's historical relationship with Alabama Baptist. Yeah, you bet. You know, I've often said that Sanford was founded uh, by Baptist for Baptists, and I could be even more uh, explicit there, uh, by Alabama Baptist for Alabama Baptist. And so uh, Sanford University has and will continue to have a very special relationship with the Baptist Church here in Alabama. 
As you well know, though, by God's grace, uh, the reach of Stanford University has grown considerably over the centuries. And uh, we now invite students from, uh, I think, 47 or 48 states, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, and of course, dozens of countries from all different kinds of backgrounds, certainly Baptist backgrounds, but uh, broader Christian ba backgrounds. And also, we invite students to the university who have no faith background or uh, claim a different faith. And I'm grateful for that. We want to expose all students to uh, the love of Christ uh, through Christian higher education at Samford. And so while we maintain those deep roots and relationships, and we will continue to nurture those and, uh, and claim partnerships on, on those roots and relationships, we will also um, uh, take advantage of the breadth of the, the Samford reach, uh, not only to Baptists or across the world, but also to others uh, in the in the faithful uh, Church of Christ. So uh, we, we look forward to, to, to elevating that, that Baptist heritage and at the same time, expanding the reach of the Christian reach of Sanford University. Speak more to that, uh, of what's happening in Christian universities, really uh, Christian higher education, mm -hmm. and maybe your philosophy on the intersection of faith and culture through a right. university setting. Yeah, you bet. I, I think universities are in a really important position uh, at the center of culture and culture making. Uh, I want uh, uh, Sanford University as a Christian Christ-centered institution to help to shape culture, not to retreat from it, but to help shape it. And so I think our students, our faculty and staff are in a very unique position to, to be able to do that. Um, I think the Christian witness, as borne out through Christian higher education, uh, has a unique opportunity to um, help to shape students' lives uh, for meaning and purpose, vocation, service, profession, and then to send our students out into the world uh, to help shape that culture, I think is a really important component of the mission of Sanford University. Um, I do think that the cultural wins are blowing strong, and uh, they certainly are blowing strong on campus. Uh, being a Christ-centered institution today is perhaps not um, as convenient or easy as it was in decades past, uh, but God has favored uh, Samford. God has favored Christian higher education, has protected it in many ways. We will continue to seek that protection and favor, but we'll also have to be very intentional about claiming Christian witness, centering ourselves on the person and work of Jesus Christ, on the authority of Holy Scripture, even as we uh, uh, address culture uh, on our campus and in society. And we'll do that hopefully in a grace-filled, a loving and faithful way. And uh, I, I'm encouraged by what I, I know and what I've seen about Sanford's faithful witness uh, in the world of Christian higher education. Where do you see Sanford sitting among all the Christian universities? Where do we, where do we we'll put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you bet. Well, of course, of course, I think Sanford is, is, and I've said this before this week, Sanford is a crown jewel of Christian higher education. It's hard to point to other institutions that have the capacity, the reach, and the potential to shape Christian higher education as much as Sanford uh, University. Uh, I think that this was the best opportunity in higher education available, and I'm just so thrilled to be able to return uh, to this post and to, and to Sanford. Um, I think Sanford is already a leader in Christian higher education, and I want to continue to claim that leadership role as well. Um, I think that uh, our resources, our reach, our influence, the significance of our campus and history, uh, the, uh, just the incredible talent of our faculty and staff, uh, and students give us the opportunity, I think, to lead and to be a leader in Christian higher education. I'd like to try to continue that trajectory. And, and frankly, uh, when people think about quality Christian institutions of higher education, I want Sanford to be at the top of that list. And not because uh, that makes us feel good or uh, we can put it on a billboard or in a magazine, uh, but because that really does impact uh, the lives of our students, and then ultimately the life uh, of our communities and our church. What can we anticipate the culture of Sanford to look like under a Beck Taylor leadership? You know, I don't anticipate bringing a lot of uh, big changes to culture. I, I, you know, I learned leadership from Dr. Westmoreland. <laughs> and so there's so much of, of his life and leadership that I already hopefully emulate 
and will continue to emulate. Um, I want Sanford to be first and foremost found to be faithful. Uh, we have a important mission uh, that is 180 years old, as you know, and we want to steward that mission well. I want our community to be curious. I want our students to ask important questions. I want to be first and foremost, a learning organization. Uh, after all, we're a university and I wanna be a great university. Uh, one of my favorites in the world of Christian higher education, uh, broad Christian higher education, the former president of Notre Dame University, Father Theodore Hesburgh, once said that in order to be a great Christian university, we must first be a great university. And so uh, that will be my passion uh, to make Sanford a great university. Um, but we also are a university that is uh, found in the conviction of the person and work of Christ, the authority um, of scripture. And so we will base uh, our, our commitment to excellence in education through those commitments. So that integration of faith and learning faith and reason, I think will help shape the culture um, of Sanford. Um, lastly, I would say uh, we want to be a fun and welcoming community. Uh, college is fun. Uh, you know, uh, Sanford's breadth, of course, extends to professional and graduate education. But when you walk across the quad uh, on any given day, like yesterday, a beautiful day, you're going to largely see 18 to 22 year olds uh, doing life together. And I want our campus to be welcoming and fun and inclusive, where students can come and discover more about themselves and the world around them and how God is summoning them into that world. And so uh, those would be some aspects of the Sanford culture that I would want to, to elevate. Are there any specifics you can share about how you uh, think Sanford will equip students, will, or continue equipping, but even maybe grow on that, equip students to be able to live out their faith in an um, increasingly secular world? Yeah. Well, I think such an important component of a Christian higher education is to help st students understand, uh, identify, to articulate a Christian worldview. Uh, many of our students are coming to Sanford University because uh, they're seeking an institution that, um, that elevates faith among many other priorities. Uh, but many other students are coming to Sanford for other reasons, and that's okay too. But we want all of our students to have a winsome exposure to the gospel. We want them to be surrounded by caring, nurturing, faithful people. And, uh, and we want to in, them to encounter Christ and, and the Christian worldview in the classroom, in the laboratory, in the co-curricular settings. And so uh, through that exposure and through that faithful witness, uh, our prayer is that uh, the lives of our students are changed and impacted uh, for the better. Uh, a big component of that, of course, is our spiritual life programs, the ways that our campus ministry uh, supports our students' uh, spiritual formation and, and growth in the Christian faith. But uh, I know this to be true about Sanford. That is not the only place where students uh, receive that faithful witness. They get it in the classroom and in, in, in the residence halls, uh, in our athletics programs. And that's the way it should be. Uh, Sanford students should be uh, uh, seeing that faithful Christian wit witness in all corners of the institution. And so I think that uh, that is how we help to shape students for, for lives of, of Christian witness out in the world. All right, well, you will get to get started on July the 1st. Um, Dr. Taylor will uh, return to Whitworth to um, wrap up his time and help with, with Whitworth figure out what's next uh, for their university. Um, in the meantime, Dr. Andrew Westmoreland will conclude 15 years as president on June the 30th, and I'm sure Sanford will have lots of um, activity around that as well. Um, if you'd like to know more about Dr. Taylor's information, we'll have um, a link to our story and his bio biography in the uh, show notes. And I'd like to just read um, one note from the co-chair of the Presidential Search Committee um, from Beth Stukes, who uh, maybe summarizes uh, how the committee feels um, as far as his credentials to be a president of Sanford University. So our committee found Dr. Taylor to be an accomplished scholar, a recognized and experienced administrator, and one who is committed to the mission of Christ-centered higher education. And so you can read more about that um, at the link that you'll find in the show notes. Dr. Taylor, thank you for taking a few moments with us this morning. Thank you, Jennifer. It's been fun to be with you this morning. God bless you. All right. Thank you.